Peace reflection. Wanted to get real, you know, have a real nigga moment. Because, you know, in a world where everything is fake, artificial, and, you know, and people trying to, you know, to be who they're not. You know, sometimes you got to have a moment where you keep it real, where you just got to be real, where you just got to say how you feel and not care what others think of you. And today's download, you know, is about that because, you know, we go through experiences and we're afraid to tell people how we feel. You know, because we're afraid of, of sounding stupid. We're afraid of offending, you know, uh, our reflection. But at the end of the day, the only person you're hurting is yourself. You know, and that's what I had to... Um, welcome everybody to the room. I knew everybody was in the room. <laughs> like, that's what I had to come to the conclusion is that I got to express myself. And normally, I don't have an issue with expressing how I feel, but a lot of times in your expression and what you and what you be thinking, like that shit don't be objective. And it's like just because you are expressing yourself, we always have to look at whether or not it's the subjective or objective. And what I found in studying myself that I have a tendency to look at things in a subjective way and I don't keep you know a healthy perspective about things and that has everything to do with my astrological programming it has because my mercury's in the fourth house so I have a tendency to look at things and it offends me or if someone tells me about myself uh, that I, I deem as, as uh Maybe I don't look at myself in that way, but it's negative. I think I'm being attacked. And the last thing we want to do is feel like somebody is attacking us. But then we have to ask ourselves, why do you feel like you're being attacked? Like, who who said? But there's this part in me that resists, you know. And, 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 it's, in, and it's in my programming that I just naturally resist. There's no, there's no logic, there's no reason behind it except for it's in my astrological program. It's that Mercury in the fourth house. And then it's, it's in Sagittarius, so it's very robust. So I'm really going to express how I feel. If it means something to me, I'm going to express how I feel. I do not care what people, I don't care about your feelings. I need to express it. And if I don't express myself, I'm going to feel a certain way. And then what I, and then, but then sometimes it's a flip side. I might feel a certain way. I, somebody might hurt my feelings or might have said something. And then I don't express myself. That's the worst thing you can do is not expressing yourself. It's not speaking. It's not, you know, coming to that person and be like, look, what you said, I ain't really like that. What you said, it hurt my feelings. I think a lot of times we are afraid to be vulnerable in front of people and be like, look, I don't really like how you said that. Like, I, you know, we, we would rather just tuck it in and act like, it, it didn't happen or we'll or we'll tuck it in and go talk about that person behind their back instead of dealing with the situation because at the end of the day you're only dealing with yourself so anybody that is in is in your electromagnetic field which is the people around you which is your your space which is it's, it's the it's the uh it's the field that your heart lets out whatever is around you is going to affect you okay you know, and so you can't sit here and say, oh, I, I, I thought about it, I took it away, and that's it. The only way you know that you've tucked it away is by the way that you move. Because you can be like, oh, I'm, you know, I was thinking this way, and now I decide I, it's not a big deal. But then you're moving in a way that it's not conducive. You're moving in a way that it did affect you. So therefore, it affected you. you just suppressing it. And you're thinking that you're helping and you're not. You're hurting. But like I, like I keep reiterating in this video, the only person you are hurting is yourself at the end of the day. And if you think nobody doesn't care, that's because you don't care about yourself. 
and if, and if you don't care about yourself what makes you think anybody else does it because I, I I remember when I was like younger and I used to go through things or I used to get mad at my my Babylon parents I'd be wanting to express myself I'll, I'll be wanting to talk and she my Babylon grandmother would tell me I don't care what you have to say go to the pillow and tell you the pillow your problems so as I got older that's what I started doing instead of me addressing the issue instead of me knowing how to articulate myself under pressure you know what I'm saying instead of me um, knowing how to articulate myself and handle myself under emotional situations I just suppressed it and went off into another space and you know and cried or talked to myself or talked myself out of it I, I wasn't allotted a space to where I got to learn how to deal with my emotions and I got to learn how to deal with situations and how to articulate myself. So in my relationship, in my adult relationships, I, that's how I dealt with it. I dealt with it as, you know what, I'm not going to deal with it, you know, and or I'm going to deal with it in my own way. But then when I was faced with a situation. I didn't know how to buckle under pressure, and so I would just go fuck off. I was just like, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to communicate. This is too much for me. I'm going to go to fuck off because this is too much. This is too much pressure, and this is too much for me. You know what I mean? So that's why it's really important um, at a very young age that you put yourself in situations that allow you to com be able to communicate more, you know, to, to be able to be around people, you know, nobody is a loner. Only people that says they're a loner is a person that, know how, that doesn't like themselves and don't know how to deal with themselves. That's why you are a loner, because you don't know how to deal with your own self. So therefore, you just don't be around people, you know, and... Um, and so I was starting to call myself a loner. And I know it's definitely not a loner. I love to talk to the sun. It's like, move it up the way so you can see me. The sun is starting to set and it's right there, you know. And so I find myself dealing with everything in my life in that way. You know what I mean? That I, when pressure hits, I don't know how to respond in a way I just wanted to stop and it's and then I and I lose control you know because I did not learn I did not master how to control my my environment you see what I'm saying I didn't I didn't master that you know so now life is putting me in situations that is showing me myself you know peace reflection my name is mama or reflection serenity now okay yeah so, you know, I'm trying to, the sun is, I hope y'all can see me because the sun is going down and it's like, it has this crazy ass glare. But, um, but yeah, it's like the best thing you can do for yourself is talking. It's talking it out. It's not, you know, being honest at all times, showing, in, showing integrity. And that is, you know, being honest when no one is looking, but also really being honest when people are looking. It's easy to be honest when no one's looking, but it's harder to be honest when there's people looking you dead in your face. And then, then what you gonna say? You know, because a lot of times we wanna say the right thing or we don't wanna hurt somebody's feelings. You know, but that really shows how you care about that person because sometimes you're going to have to hurt people's feelings, people that you say you care about, to tell them the truth about themselves. You got to be their mirror. You know what I mean? And then if you're the mirror that lies, that's distorting, you know, what use are you for for that person, you know, in their life? You know, somebody, what's, what's y'all trying to, somebody trying to build, let me see who it is. Oh, so, oh you want to build? Okay. The other way. Oh, it's it's gone now. The glare is gone. Yeah, because it was looking crazy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, um, and so and so also, like, even with the way my the patterns of my mind work, being this way can also hinder me with having a child, because you know I'm pregnant. And the one thing about women, especially black women. You can't tell us nothing. Like, we have this, we were either born with this chip or this chip was placed in us on our shoulder that you can't tell a black woman nothing. Like, she knows 
everything. And I think a lot of it has to do with the environment that we were brought up in. Babylon gave us this sense of independency, this, this sense of a voice, and going against our man. Because in Babylon, the black woman does not have a man. The white woman, the European woman does, the Chinese woman does. She, she has a man, and they listen to their man. They're governed by their man. But see, we are governed by another man. And so our man is either locked up or he's in the same, he's in the same boat as us. Okay? And so we have a tendency not to listen. You know? And that was um, a struggle. That has been a struggle for me because my energy is very masculine. I have very masculine energy. Now, I'm nothing but, if you look at my astrological chart, I'm nothing but fire and air. Like, you know, I'm, I'm that's that's it. Like I'm that's it. so, and then like I'm in my my age is in my late thirties, and so I've been doing this for a while. I've been taking care of myself for a while, and so the problem with women, we don't know, especially black women, we don't know how to respect our man. You know, you know, and I think it has a lot to do with our mother. It has everything to do with society. It has a lot to do with our mothers. Is that we don't um. We don't know how to respect our man. And so a lot of times we think we know what we know and we stick to it. You see what I'm saying? But in the situation that I'm in now to where I'm about to give birth, all I have is my man. I don't have, I'm not relying on no hospital. I'm not relying on, on nothing. It's me and the earth and my, and my man and my family. And the only way that this 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 can work is no resistance, and allowing, and listening. You see what I'm saying? But the challenge is, um, I'm thankful. But the challenge is when you're so used to doing things your way, and then here comes somebody trying to show you another way. It's you you get stuck, and then you and then you feel like you you feel like like you know you feel like you're being weak. But the weakness is not knowing how, it's not knowing how to listen. The weakness is in resisting. The strongest person allows life to flow for them because they know who they are. They know what it is. So that's what is strength. The weakest person is trying to hold on and hold, and gather up the resources. You know, them people like in Babylon that be the hoarders and keeping all kind of stuff. That's weak because you, because one, you're over, you're, you're, you, you are, um, taking more than what you deserve, what you deserve and what you need because out of fear and because out of weakness, you want to take, 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 take. You know what I mean? You don't, you think, you don't, you don't believe of an abundance. You don't believe in the power of manifestation. You don't know who you are. And so that's exactly how I look at it as a person, as a woman that doesn't know how to listen to her man. She doesn't, she, she is weak because she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know her purpose. You know, she she devalues her own self because as a woman, I'm supposed to listen to my man. And if I don't listen to my man, then I'm with the wrong man. You know what I mean? That says everything about me. Like, why are you with somebody that you don't listen to? Like, why are you settling? Like, why why are you why are you in, why are you in this situation? And then sometimes, but then sometimes you gotta accept people for who they are. And there are some parts of me that I have accepted who I am, and I love that part of myself, but then there's parts of me that I don't like about myself. There's parts of me that I don't like about myself. And I'm very confident. I'm a Sagittarius with a Leo moon. I think very highly of myself. I think I'm awesome and a great person. But then there's other parts of me that also hinder me, my debilitations. You see what I'm saying? And so when people tell me, that this is who you are, you can't do no better. That, that that challenges me to be more. You know what I'm saying? Before I used to when people used to tell me what I can and cannot do, I would listen. I would be like, you know what? You right. You know and I would have a pity party for myself. But now I'm like, you know what? You might be right. But you, but but you know, but I have every moment in this time to do something different. I have every moment in this time to change because I want to change. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you think of me. It's everything about how I feel about myself and knowing who I am. 
And that's the part, that's the moment you have to get into with yourself. That's the part of life you have to decide who you are and you and you become it. Don't let nobody tell you, you know, um, who, who you are. Because you're dealing with a lot of people that don't know who they are. And they're, and they're only limited to their own perception. People are limited to their own perception. People are limited to their own, their own astrological program. And you do have some astrological programs that have great discernment. And that can see, that can teach you something because of their experience. And you do have to respect that, but you do not have to be governed by that. You don't have to be completely led by that. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, you don't have to resist it either. Don't resist anything that anybody says to you. That's, that's the difference. Know who you are. And when someone tells you that you're this and that you're that, you know, don't resist it. Don't 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 resist it because you resisting is like you arguing with yourself in the mirror. That's just you talking to you. And you wouldn't be in the mirror right now having an argument with yourself, would you? So why would you have an argument with anybody else when they talking about you? Because everybody's a reflection of each other. So whatever you see in me, obviously it's in you. So so why I'm gonna argue why I'm gonna argue if I know that and if I believe that. You see what I'm saying? So I take so now I'm at the point in my in my in my purpose is that I'm allowing. You know, that I'm not resisting. You know, but the one but the only relationship that I still, you know, uh have a struggle with is is my is my intimate relationship. And I think the reason why I, I still struggle with that is because it, it's tied to my emotion. Because sometimes me and my husband, like, he can, I could be in a good mood and he could come and say something to me and I, and it just throws me off. And I, and then I, and I go into that, that, that masculine energy that, that wants to retaliate or wants to explain itself when I should be going into that. That's the, that's the main time I should be going into my feminine, my feminine energy. And, and, and instead of trying to be understood, try to understand the situation, manip manipulate the situation for myself because I know all it is is just the universe testing me, putting me under pressure. The universe knows how I am. The universe knows what I want. So my relationship is just a catalyst that show me how much do you love yourself. And if you love yourself, how are you going to respond to him? Because he is you, regardless of what he says or whatever, regardless of what you think of him. Well, guys, if you think you can do better, that still is you. Or you think, or you think this is that, that like they are these with me. Like he could do better. Like it goes both ways. Because we you know we all got insecurities. Where you know I think I could do better, or maybe I'm not good enough for him. You know what I mean? But the universe is is it's always going to test you. You see what I'm saying? And so how you treat your lover is how is how you treat yourself. It's how you feel about yourself. And so my relationship still shows me, and even though in other parts of my life that I've grown and I and I and I'm not resisting, it's like that relationship be like really, really okay. I, all right, because my emotions are tied to, and anything your emotions are tied to, that is your greatest weakness. And you remember that. That's the reason why Babylon can get you with the food. They can get you with the music. They can get you with the, the, the people. And that's what Babylon does. Is That's how they control you. And that's how they control the animal in the zoo. It's with its food. Those three things. People, food, and, um, and no, it's, it's religion. It's, it's your belief system. And it's food. Okay. And it's also music too. Because these things are tied to your emotion. So anything that you hold on to your emotionally, that is your greatest weakness. And you have to know that about yourself. You have to know. You have to know what what really means the most to you. And that's going to be your weakness. Okay? 
and remember that and know how to manipulate it's nothing wrong with you loving that person you know it's nothing wrong with that but you gotta you gotta also have a healthy sense of attachment and you have to understand who this person is for you because people come into your life to show you yourself and help you grow and help you evolve and sometimes you'll keep those relationships and sometimes you won't keep those relationships you know but I do believe in those those relationships that help you to build and if you're in a relationship where you can you don't feel like you can express yourself or you afraid to express yourself then you're in a rel the wrong relationship but at the same time you also got to know what type of person you are because you have a you have extroverted people and then you have introverted people you have some people that just know how to express themselves like me I'm extrovert like I must be talking like I I, I I I need to talk and then when I do try to be that person that don't want to talk about their feelings it hurts me the most like it's like oh my gosh but the introverted people they are masters at that because they're introverted whatever they're feeling whatever you know they're thinking you know whatever they're going through they know how to bring that in but that's the worst type of person to be because you're hurting yourself and that's the reason why you probably have a lot of ailments going on in your body a lot of blockage because you're holding on to stuff that you really need to talk about you know what I mean and so um so it's very interesting when two people come together one's introvert one is extrovert you know because for me I need to talk and if and I can't be with someone that can't talk to me that's not that's not a loving relationship that's not a relationship that I want to be in it, it makes me feel bad about myself you know and it makes me feel like that person does not love me but then you have people that are introverted and they don't look at it in that way they they you know what I mean? They, they, so it's, it's so it's really challenging. At one point, do you accept people for who they are, and at what point do you let them go? Because it's like I get it. That's how you are, but it's not working for me. It's not what I want. So I have to just settle and accept you for who you are, and, but not not choose happiness, not choose what I want because you know. You know what I mean? Because, because you want to, because you feel like we should be together. You know, that, that's something that I've always thought about in relationships. Like, like you know, we hold on to our relationships, and yeah, you do love that person, but dang, but dang, I love myself, and I got to, all I have is today to live my life. I don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Hell, I don't even have. There's not a life that I'm planning for because all I have is now. You know, and a lot of times I think the reason why people live live a limited life is because they 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 think that tomorrow is promised. And in, and a lot of times the reason why people make the choices that they make in their life is because the consequence the consequence isn't big enough to really love yourself, to really do what's right. There's more people out there that's not that don't that do not love themselves. There are more people out there that is not living righteously, and that's because the consequences aren't big enough for them. You know, being in that mediocre relationship, it's not a big enough consequence for you to decide that you want to love yourself. You see what I'm saying? And then like eating the foods that you're eating. And seeing what it's doing to your body, the sicknesses that you have ain't enough consequence. Going against God, going against nature, it's not a big enough consequence because now what you have created, the lower self has created. Oh, I just get medicines. I mean, you just get pills and you just cover it up. But what if you did? What if you didn't have those pills and, med and medicine? Then what you would do? The consequence would be big. But we cut. But we cover. But we cover it up, or we make excuses. You know what I mean? And like for me, the con like for me in the state of, of state of mind that I'm in right now and the reason why I'm choosing to to give up the resistance, the reason why I'm choosing to be confident and know who I am and be in my purpose is because I'm about to have a baby. OK, and the consequences of me not being in alignment to my purpose and being in alignment to my child and being in alignment to my man and being in alignment to anybody that's going to assist me is huge. OK, it's something to take seriously. It's not to be afraid of because because if you because it's supposed to be doing it's not it's not to be it's not to be fearful of it's something to you know, make sure you fear 
not doing the right thing. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm not afraid to have a baby. I'm afraid to not live in my purpose. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, af I'm afraid to not make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay? I ain't afraid of have, not having no baby now. That's what I'm supposed to do. You know? So I think that that's that's the that's the issue. So there's not enough consequence, and so even not expressing yourself, expressing how you feel, the con and, and and being authentic and being real, there's not enough consequence for people to to decide to do that because they can just cover it up and it's like it's not a big deal. But I think if I if when we go against ourselves and if the consequences were bigger and the effect was bigger, I think we would decide to be different. You know what I mean? But I, I say every day choose to be like, if I don't express myself today, that I'm going, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, but that's not even a big, a big enough consequence either. But you know, just think of, just think of, if I, if like, just think about if I don't choose to be happy, I'm going to choose being happy today. And if I don't choose to be happy today, what's the consequence going to be for me? You know, if I choose to get up every day and reflect the light of the Honorable Master Chief Nature Boy. And if I don't, what's the consequence today? You know, I choose to be a, a, a good person. I choose to be a virtuous woman, you know. And if I don't, what's the consequence of that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, like every day I'm going to start programming myself to to um, start looking at it like that. Because I'm hurting myself. If you don't have vigor about your life... Then what type of life are you living? You know what I mean? And it's like, and if, and if you don't have vigor about your life and you want to have vigor in your life, there's time to change. You can change. You're not stuck, you know, in, in your life. Only the first thing you need to change is just your thoughts. Start changing your thinking. Because then when you change your thinking, you change your movement. Because even thinking, even speaking is an action. But you have to start speaking it. Because words hold spells. So whatever you say, it will become. You know what I mean? So continue to express yourself. You know, start studying yourself. And, and you know, and the best way to start studying yourself, one, is watch Carbonation TV videos. And then two, you know, get your birth chart. Go to Terra.com. And get your birth chart and study yourself. You know, but if you if you're someone that's new to astrology, before you even do that, I I and I wanted to say this is you know this is off topic, but I wanted to say if you don't know anything about astrology, I suggest you go and start studying the basics because you can go get your birth chart and that's cute and all, but if you don't know the difference between Leo and Virgo, it's not going to do you any good. You know, if you don't know what this, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you want to understand the basics of astrology before you dive into your chart, because then you're going to be like, well, what's a 12th house or what's a 6th house when you don't even know what the 12 signs are. You know what I mean? And so I suggest that you go study what the 12 signs are, the four elements, you know, the 10 planets. Like, read about that. Get an under, and the, and the 12 houses. Like, get an understanding of it, you know. And then when you get your chart, then you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. Because a lot of times, that's why people, they get their chart and they hit me up and they're just like, I don't understand it. Because you didn't take the time to study. Because for me, before I even knew about the birth chart, I would, um, I knew about the 12 signs and I knew, about, I understood the four elements. You see what I'm saying? I understood the, the four elements. I understood the 12 signs. I didn't know nothing about no, no 10 planets. I just knew about the sun. But then, because I had a good knowledge of the 12 signs and the elements and what they meant, when I got my birth chart, it was easier for me to uh, understand what I was reading. And then, on top of that, you know, I was able to um, understand faster the 12 houses and the aspects and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just, and, and in the 10 plants, I was able to understand it, like, really fast. So, that's what I suggest, you know, um... You know, and, and my reflection, Shane Shook Music, my moon is in Taurus in the seventh house. Do you know what that means? Do you know what your moon in Taurus in the seventh house means? You know, if you don't, I suggest that you study that. 
you know, and what you could do is study the moon in Taurus. You go on Google, you can go on YouTube, you can watch videos, you study the moon in Taurus, and then you study the moon in the seventh house, and you put it together. And then sometimes you can find articles that actually has all that together, you know. But tarot.com actually has it all together. But yeah, make sure you, you know, you study yourself, you know, by getting your astrological chart. Make sure you have yourself around people, you know, that are healthy for you. Become a people tarian. You see what I'm saying? Like, be around people that is promoting who you know you are and who you want to be. Don't be around people that be like, I remember when you used to be like that. Well, I'm not like that now. You know, but when you start changing your thinking, and when you're going to start changing your whole reality. Because that's where your reality stems, stems from, is your heart. And if you want to know your intent, if you want to know why your reality is the way that it is, study your Venus. Because that's where it starts. It starts from the heart. You see what I'm saying? So let me see if anybody has any questions before I go. Because I just really wanted to get on here. I really wanted just to get on here and, exp and express myself. That's who. That's my purpose. That's who I am. I'm a person that loves to talk. You know what I'm saying? And if I learn something, I want to teach. I'm a teacher. Like, I've always been that way. I've always, like, even when I was in Babylon, if I learned something, I had to tell somebody. If I had something delicious, everyone must know. And so that is my purpose. When, so when I'm enlightened, I'm going to enlighten others with what, you know, with what I know. You know what I'm saying? But I'm also going to show people you know my life as well because you can learn from my experience that you know that's how that's how you gain wisdom by learning through other people's experiences and things you know so if y'all have any questions oh it's poppy said do you want a water birth you know that's that is the the plan but you know you never plan you just be prepared you know i want a beautiful safe birth i want the, you know whether it's in the water or whether it's in like on the on the earth grounding i really would like to be make sure i'm on the ground for sure because you know you see the animals they be outside and i wanted to be daylight i, I said please little baby come in the daytime i came at night and master teacher uh, rambo he came at night but i said please little baby come during the day that would make me so happy <laughs> So, you know, me and the baby having a talk. I'm getting it together. Like, okay, this is what I want you to do. Okay. Um, so we'll see what, we'll see what happens, you know, with that. Okay. Um, if I feel one to know if having a period is natural, um, having the type of periods that we have in Babylon is not natural. Um, you know, we aren't supposed to be bleeding that long and really bleeding at all. I know when I was, um, raw vegan, um, in Babylon and I was raw vegan for like two or three months I think and I had no period because my body was clean so the period is just there because of the, un the unhealthy eating that you're having even if you're vegan you're still going to have a period because you eat you still eating a lot of cooked processed foods and so your body still has to clean that out but I know for me for a fact when I was just eating fruit fruits and vegetables and nothing like processed no breads or nothing i did not have a period like i had like the symptoms to let me know that i was ovulating but i didn't bleed at all you know and even when coming here uh, when i came back into the to the tropics like i i did i still had a period but it was like three days and then i didn't have any pms i didn't have any symptoms so i looked down like oh okay the period's here like it was like that it was it, it wasn't this dramatic you know hormonal experience it's just like oh this is just what my body you know is doing um so uh yeah so well i don't know what you mean what do you guys use oh use pads we don't use tamp we don't use tampons use pads and if you can find the natural organic ones that's even better you know uh, but yeah so any more questions it looked like somebody was trying to oh it's okay it's poppy had a request yeah if you wanted to um yeah we just go to the store and get them like if we can find if we can find uh, the natural ones they, I mean, they make alternatives, alternative natural ones, so it's not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, but we don't use tampons. So, is there any more questions besides about pads? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I don't have a choice but to get ready. Everything 90s. Yeah, I'm I'm, re I'm ready. Yeah. I'm really am ready. You know, this is something, you know, that I'm taking very seriously at some point. You know, I got, you know, take, I, taking it seriously. This is something serious. It's something big that I want to show humanity that it can be done and that it's being done. You know, there are women out there that having home births and they have the midwives and the doulas at their house or whatever but in, but you never hardly ever see women be in straight nature and be outside in nature and do it like how it's supposed to be done yeah so um um empress do you want to get blocked because i know you've been following me so if you want to get blocked let me know so what you're not going to do is disrespect my room. I didn't ask you, like, you coming in my house uninvited. I didn't invite you coming to my house. And if you don't like what's being said, you know, don't come to my house. Don't watch the channel. But what you're not going to do, you're not going to disrespect me because I know you following me. You're in my room. You know, you know exactly who the father of my child is. Okay? So let's not be disrespectful. But if you want to be disrespectful because that's who you are, we can do this. You can get blocked. I don't have a, I don't have a problem. But what you're not going to do, you're not going to be disrespectful. You know, it, it is what it is. Oh, I'm thankful it's Poppy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, everybody says they think I'm having a boy. Oh, my um, husband, uh, Master Teacher Nero, he is a Leo with a Virgo moon. And we and the baby is supposed to come in December. You know, the baby comes in December. I didn't go to the doctor, so I don't know how many weeks I am or whatever. But I'm gauging, uh, like, between November to January. You know, I know the last cycle was in March. But, you know, sometimes women could still be pregnant a month before even with the, with the cycle. So that's what, I, that's what I'm gauging. Between, but I'm hopeful. But, but nine months calculating is December. So that's what, that's what we're, we're expecting. It. And someone asked, are you going to, um, are you going to film it? Well, I would like to. I would, I, would, I would like to film it. But I know if I'm outside and if it's during the day, I, I want to be... I don't want to have any restriction or clothes on, so I don't know how that's going to work. But um, at least I would like to get to the point to where when the baby's coming, you can actually see that it's happening. So we'll see if I had to do some type of adjustment. But we'll see. I'm, I'm really just going to allow the experience. I'm really just going to allow and see how things, you know, turn out. You know, I'm really not planning anything. I just know that it's going to be in nature. Okay? That's, that's what I do know. <laughs> she said don't mess it up for us y'all <laughs> I mean yeah you say that empress but I've said it a couple of times that you know I'm not gonna sit here don't don't play me yeah, don't play me. You know I have not been his direct in a, in a very long time. So for you to even ask that is disrespect. So don't play me. And you know what? You're just going to go ahead and just get get knocked out just for being foolish. There you go. Like, come on. Like, you're not going to play. Like, I'm, like, I have no no trucks to give to people anymore that just think they can be disrespectful. Because whatever I tolerate in my life says everything about me. You know what I mean? Because the internet gives cowards an outlet to say whatever they want to say. But they want to say that to your face. They'll be all in your face. Hey girl, mm, yeah. Mm, and, th and then go behind your back. Well, the internet is exactly the same except for they got their little handle and their little picture. You know, some of them are bold enough to put their face up. But most of the time, they, they don't put their face up. And then they got everything to say. But you wouldn't be like that in real life. But the internet, it's, it's, it's a whole nother world for, for people that are nobodies to come and try to be anybody. 
You know what I mean? You ain't even a somebody. You're just anything. You know, and they come, and they come into your room, you know, trying to say some stuff and think you're not going to say anything. But bump that, you know, I wish somebody would. You know, and that's how, that's, the, and I learned that from the Armour Master Chief, Nature Boy. He wish somebody would, and he'd be going in. So I'm like, you know, I'm most definitely going to be going in, too. You know, I'm not going to play that. And don't, don't, don't you let nobody play you and say whatever they think they want to say. But like I said, most of the time, people in your face, they smile on your face. You know who the people that don't really fuck with you like that, but they be smiling on your face and being phony. You know that. We all we all know that, but you, you you know what I'm saying? But a lot sometimes I like to just call those people out and be like, I know you fake. Like, why you being fake? You know what I mean? So it's like, I still love you, though, but, you know, be real. All right? <laughs> Have you had weird cravings? Yeah, I did have weird cravings. I had a lot of cravings from back in my childhood. Like, I really craved, like, soup. And I craved, like, pizza and things. Stuff that for my child. Like, it was cra crazy, the stuff that I craved. Like, and I've been vegan for a while. And I was craving things that were not vegan or whatever. Um, but... I'm, I'm so thankful that I didn't succumb to that and I know and I just know what it is it's just my it's just it's just the process it's just you know because you go through a lot of experiences being pregnant you know and I do believe me being pregnant was a lesson for me to, to help me be strong you know what I mean because I, I, I did go through a lot of things now I didn't go through a lot of discomfort but as far as like mental and hormonal things like it really showed me myself and I'm very proud of myself as, as, as far as long as I've gotten to, like, um, it could have been worse. And I'm so thankful, you know, that it, that it wasn't. But I'm not going to tell you I didn't have my days. You know, my husband, you know, can say, can vouch for me. It's like, it, you know, we it, it was a growing experience. And it still is a growing experience because each trimester like it's something different and so now i'm at the the, the the last one and so now my body is actually shifting and but and it's really happening and i can and I, i'm feeling things and like it's not it's not as intense as the labor is going to be but my body is like okay you're going to here's the feeling here's the contraction feeling here's an expanding feeling here's a feeling where you think you'll butt bone is about to fall off like it's like <laughs> it's, it's those type of feelings where my body is shifting like my body is shifting this baby is getting bigger i feel the baby all day like the baby is hungry the baby's getting even more hungry because i be to the point where i'm about to pass out because i'm so hungry and i know it's because the baby is getting bigger it's like this is the crunch time you know and so but but like i said i have not had any issues because of the life that I'm living and see and, and then I'm, we're also going to be making a video like a little video about grounding and pregnancy but I do I'm a big advocate for earthing and being on the ground walking barefooted like just being in this type of environment because I did not realize and do your research how effective grounding is for a pregnant woman because you know I sleep in the tent I'm always barefooted if I wasn't on camera I would not have this own like I'm connected to the, the four elements at all time, and I have not had a bad a bad pregnancy. Like I have not had we did not have morning sickness. She just she didn't even have morning sickness. I didn't have morning sickness. Like I ha I have not had like any like emotional problems. Like you know they say a lot of times um, pregnant women be under emotional stress. I have not been stressed. You know, um, in this pregnancy, I, I've just been very positive in this pregnancy. And I do believe it has a lot to do with grounding. And then also grounding helps you sleep good. It helps you sleep better. I had no pain, no inflammation. I don't got no swollen feet or anything, you know. And I just do believe it's because, you know, of, of my lifestyle. And like I said, the baby is a, it's big. The baby's getting bigger. And so now I'm, like, I'm starting to feel it. But this is just the last the last moment. This is the, the last part of the pregnancy. So I'm expecting big shifts because my, my, my body is preparing. My mind is preparing my body. You know what I mean? Because the moon is connected to the mind, you know, so it's like I, I can see it, but I'm ready, you know, I'm open and I, and I just know everything is going to be okay. You know what I mean? So, like.
Alright, so any further, is there no more questions? Oh yeah, me and Chief just do be doing that. We be looking at people eating the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh sunshine said how do you track a pregnancy without having a period exactly so i just know i just knew my last period was march you see what i'm saying so you know so i wasn't tracking my period when i was still getting periods i was just like okay it came you know um and so that's what happened and I wasn't tracking it, so that's why I was like, okay, this baby can come between November to January. And But in nature, they don't track their periods. In nature, they don't, you know, go to the doctor. So this is, like, real. This is organic. This is just how it is. Like, the baby comes when it comes, which you better be ready. But I will say that my body is letting me know it's coming. You know what I'm talking about? Like, um, the my body, the way my body feels... It's coming. Like, the, the time is coming near. Like, the Braxton Hicks and just the way that I'm feeling and stuff, my body. Oh, you know when this baby about, you know that the baby about to come. Like I said, this baby could come next month. I would not be surprised if this baby comes next month. But I'm prepared. I'm prepared for it. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, it's coming. I want you to come. I want the Sagittarius. No. No, uh-uh. It can come at any time. I'm, I'm listening to my body. I'm in tune with my body. So it's like, yeah, I know. I know what I'm feeling. It's like it it can come, like at any time. So, but you got to be like in tune with yourself and in tune with your environment to know that. Okay. But if nobody has no more questions, I'm gonna get off here. Remember, don't be afraid to express how you feel. Make sure you are constantly, you know, being honest, being authentic, being transparent, you know, opening yourself up, keeping it real, and also taking in what people got to say to you. Because if you're going to keep it real and if you're going to be authentic, you got to create a space to allow others to do that as well. Okay? I love myself. And this will go up on YouTube on, uh, I think it is Reflection Serenity's YouTube page. Okay? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, and, oh, I forgot because you're right. You're right. <laughs> I like to give much honor. What's your message about? It was don't don't be afraid to express how you feel. But then I start asking. Then at the end, I, they were asking questions about, you know, the pregnancy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But no, but no. But I want to give thanks and reverence to the Honorable Master Chief Nature Board because you inspired this message today. <laughs> I love, I love myself. Let me show you. I love myself so much. <laughs> I'm so thankful. <laughs>